In 2020, I showcased my first set of custom models, the Lino Origins James and Origins Thomas. I made these from Lino's old G-Scale models of Thomas and James, and a lot of people seemed to really like them considering their video quickly became the most viewed video on my channel. And while I loved how James came out, I wasn't that happy with Thomas. I was very new to custom modeling at the time, so I didn't put in the necessary care when creating Thomas. James was simple. All I had to do was paint him black and line him red. The only issue with him was the paint around the number 5. But Thomas was in the wrong shade of green, his lining was a mess, and the lettering was all over the place. For the longest time, I wanted to redo him. I kept pushing off the task until recently. I had some downtime between projects and figured there's no better time. So first order of business, I had to correct the paint job. The first time around, I used satin hunter green because it was the only green spray paint I could find at Walmart and I figured it was close enough. It was not. This was way too dark a green and I always hated how it looked on the model. This time I bought satin lagoon, which was much more accurate. The wheels on the body were unscrewed and taken outside for painting. I removed the flanges from the wheel to avoid getting paint on them a move I should have made the first time I was painting. I also opted to paint the gears as well. They're still visible between the wheels and they'd look off if they weren't the same color. While those were drying, I decided to clean the wheel flanges, not only to remove the paint, but to clean off any dirt it accumulated while on the tracks. Once the wheels and body were dry enough to touch, I lined them in the same manner I always do, with paint sharpies. On the first go around, I was very sloppy and got stray paint all over the model. This time, I made sure to be very careful and not get paint anywhere but the lines. The rim of the wheels were then painted as well. The model was already starting to look better. The satin lagoon was much more appealing to the eyes and the lining looked very neat. I then decided to apply a clear coat to give the model a shiny look and to protect the paint. Now it was time for the lettering. Before, I drew in the model with paint sharpies, which was a terrible idea as my handwriting is atrocious. I considered making a stencil, but that was going to be way too complicated, so I opted to use some Avery labels instead. I created the labels in Photoshop, using a template provided by Avery. I had to separate the LB and the SC as they wouldn't fit on a single label. Also, apparently the LBSC typeface is most similar to the Arial font, which I found interesting. Once those were printed, I cut off the excess paper, painted the backs, and applied them to the model. The back paint did overflow a bit, but it's ultimately an improvement from how it looked before. Now, I finally have an Origins Thomas that I'm happy with. It looks much more accurate and almost like a real product Lionel would produce. Comparing them side by side, it really shows what a difference a little care can make. It's definitely the best looking of my Thomas models. While I have these models side by side, I might as well address a question I've seen. How do all my Thomas models have cab roofs? If you recall, my original Thomas didn't have its original roof, so how does it have one now? Simple, I duplicated it. I created a mold out of silicone rubber and cast the copy in liquid plastic. I gave the original roof to my original Thomas and gave my Origins Thomas the copy. It's not a perfect copy, there are a few blemishes, but it does the job well enough and that's fine by me. Well, this is where I'm going to end the video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I thank you for watching. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to put the finishing touches on my next custom model.